On November 15th, we're gonna kick off a four-day online trading workshop. This is a live event, but it's also recorded. So whether you can attend live or wanna catch the recordings later, make sure you register. I'll throw a link in the description box below or in the show notes. Hey guys, Akil Stokes here. Welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. Today we're gonna to talk about self-confidence and really a self-check that you can do to give yourself a little bit of encouragement, motivation, and really just know that you're on track as far as achieving your goals. Now before we hop into it, make sure you follow this podcast and please give it a like if you're watching on YouTube. Let's go. So the other day I read a post by Jason Greystone on Instagram. I'm talking about the real Jason Greystone at J underscore Greystone. Every other Greystone out there is fake. So if someone DMs you and, and wants to manage your money or give you crypto, uh, run as far away as possible. But he put up this cool post called seven signs that you are doing better than you think you are. And it's a weird title if you first kind of think about it, right? Usually we're talking about seven signs that you are a horrible mess, seven signs that you are unproductive, seven signs that you need to get your life better and, and, and blah, 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 blah. Because typically we tend to focus on the negatives, right? But What's important on the path to success, and, and this isn't talked about nearly enough, which is why I love this post, is it's one thing to become successful, right? When we have that drive of going from nothing or a place that we want to improve to becoming successful, right? There's a lot of passion. There's a lot of motivation there. Once we get successful, we tend to teeter out and we kind of settle. And this is why it's harder to maintain success than initially become successful, right? I had a conversation the other day about money and we always talk about money and, and happiness and the same thing with money, right? When um, I think the post talked about how you need to value your life more than your money, right? And understand that money is simply a tool that allows you to build and develop the things that you really want in life. Um, but you don't often feel that way or you don't get to feel that way until you've achieved a certain amount of money, right? When you don't have money, right? Your main motivation is money, 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 money. Once you get money, money stops buying happiness and other things need to replace that. Now, again, money is still a tool, but you look at money as a tool to or ends to a mean and, and, and instead of being the, the, just the one thing. And what happens with a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners and, and traders, to be specifically to the, the Trading Coach podcast, is that once we get successful, we settle. I've got this system. I've got this strategy um, that works, and I don't need to do anything else, right? I, I have reached the level that I want to reach. And again, if you get lazy, you will start going backwards. And I think the 2020 year, the COVID year, proved that more than anything, where a lot of businesses got stagnant, a lot of businesses were lazy, a lot of businesses said, oh, this is the formula, it's worked like this for years, we never have to change. And then all of a sudden, an unexpected event comes and they're forced to change and they're either slow to doing it or unable to do it, and they start going backwards. And that's fearful for many entrepreneurs, right? Most successful people understand that. And that's a major fear of theirs to go backwards. However, it's once you get past that certain level of success, it's also harder to understand that you're still successful. Again, going back to the uh, initial kind of um, example of it, right? When you have nothing, and you go from nothing to something, there's a, a drastic change. You can see the differences in your life. They, they, they pop out to you drastically, right? Bills are paid. You can afford this. You can go out to eat. There are some massive changes. As you get more successful or closer to that quote unquote level of success, those changes aren't as drastic because now it becomes kind of common nature. This is the norm. So it's harder to evaluate. So these are seven signs that you can use if you are already successful or on that journey to be successful. I think it works for everyone to tell that, hey, you are still on the right track. You're not going backwards, even if you can't see that change as clearly as you did before. And the first one is you've changed a lot from a year ago. Change is a sign of growth. Don't fear change. Fear that you stay the same. Now, 
how do you know that you've changed? Well, this is something that you need to keep track of, right? I remember reading this a long time ago in a, a Tony Bo uh, Tony Bobbins, right? Tony Robbins book um, called Awaken the Giant Within, where there was this goal setting spreadsheet. We use this with many of our traders we worked with as well, where we did it like, um, you know, we did a, a present type of evaluation. We did five years from now, we did five years ago. But if you're consistently kind of tracking where you're at in your life, so like emotional happiness, financial happiness, like relationship happiness, business happiness, right? You can, you can add many things, right? If you make a habit of tracking that, let's say end of the year, beginning of the year, now you can go back and compare, right? When you do it the next year, you can say, okay, this is where I was at a year ago. This is where I'm at right now. Did I progress? Did I go from one grade, four out of five stars to five out of five stars? Did I go backwards? Did I go from three out of five stars to two out of five stars, right? It gives you something to evaluate, just like back testing data. Um, change isn't a bad thing, right? So if you're noticing small changes in your life, um, that's not necessarily bad. Change is good. Stress is good. Strain is good, right? It's just like lifting, right? If you don't put your body under strain, if you don't put your body under stress, your muscles will not grow. And yet there's a little bit of burn and discomfort at the time, but that's what's needed for your muscles to grow back bigger. So it really is kind of like a, a one step backwards, two step forward type of thing. And you don't need to fear that that small period of pain because what it's gonna do is allow you to grow bigger and stronger in the future. Number two is, you have been through hard times, right? Um, and I kind of talked about that already, right? Stress and strain bring growth, right? There's nothing wrong with going through a stressful period. It could be a stressful period in your trading. I'm going. I'm talking to a lot of traders right now who have had a rough year, and we're going to have a big evaluation um, in December and, and, and talk about it. Um, but going through strains, going through stressful times, whether it's business, whether it's personal, it doesn't matter. They're not always negatives, right? Uh, those hard times allow you to see more clearly, right? Everyone always says, right, the best lessons are learned through losses, right? Um, because it gives you a chance to really kind of sit back and evaluate it and kind of mentally realize that, hey, I didn't like how this felt or I didn't like how this went. What can I implement or what can I do so I don't feel this feeling again? And again, it's never fun at the time taking a step back, but remember, a step back provides perspective. When you take a step back, you can see everywhere you were at before and it gives you a clearer guide on where you need to go and what you need to do stepping forward. Number three, you are serious about your goals. Most people do not plan their goals. They follow the masses. If you plan your goals, you are doing better than the masses. And Goal setting is key. You know, I love this from a micro and a macro level. I love it on a macro level of bigger picture. Where do I want to be? Again, that's that could be part of that um, the Tony Robbins thing I told you about. Where where were you at five years ago? Where were you at now? Where do you want to be in five years? And again, you you can change those time frames as much as you want. You know, one year ago, where am I at right now? One year later, you can do it month by month, quarter by quarter. I don't care. It's your goals. You can do whatever you want. Um, but again, speaking about having direction and having perspective and, and getting a clear view of your future, your goals are the destination on your map, right? If you don't have goals, it's like going for a car ride and you have no idea where you're going, right? You're going to waste gas. You're going to waste time. And are you ever going to get to where you want to go? Or are you going to end up someplace random? You're probably going to end up someplace random. If you put that destination into your GPS, well, all of a sudden, you know exactly where you want to go. Now, again, you know, you, you may take a wrong turn, right? You may get stuck in traffic. Uh, you know, you may encounter a handful of different obstacles, but at least you have clarity on what direction you want to move in. And as long as you keep moving, you will get there. And again, this could be done from a, a macro level, big term, a micro level as well. I do this on a weekly basis. I do this on a day-to-day -day basis where the, either the last thing I do before I go to bed or the first thing I do when I wake up is I, I plan out my day. Here are the goals for the day. Here's what I want to accomplish. I put them in order so I know exactly what I want to attack. And it also allows me to feel accomplished, right? I, the, the, the biggest thing for me is, is Mondays. Those, the majority of my goals are on Mondays. It's kind of my, 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 my work day. Um, and when I get a certain amount of things done, I feel good. 
right? That dopamine fires off and I'm like, yeah, I had a productive day and I'm fired up for other aspects of my life. I'm just in a better mood because I know that I achieved something. Um, and that happens with bigger goals as well. Number four, you have one to two friends. Having fewer friends you can count on rather than having a large group you can't count on is a sign you're doing better. And this one's gonna be different from person to person. Um, it all depends on who you are, right? Again, I, I'm not a very social person. I, I, I have a lot of friends. I don't have a lot of close, close, close friends. My, my dad always told me you should be able to keep your, your close, close, close friends, um, kind of count them on your hand. Um, and but but the general if we take the one to two friends out because I don't I don't think that's a you know that number is irrelevant but in general if you keep your circle tight and you keep your circle tight with people that are going to bring the best out of you and encourage you and motivate you both from a, a personal standpoint a financial standpoint a business standpoint um, and an emotion I don't know if I said emotional already but an emotional standpoint that's key as well. Um, that is a positive sign. You should have friends that address all of your different needs. So if you kind of, you know, break down yourself, uh, like the old little kind of brainstorming circles and, and put you in the middle and start drawing these bubbles, you know, right? write down what are your needs? What are your financial needs, right? Do you need someone that's going to keep you on track financially? Someone you can talk to about investing, personal finance, savings accounts, stuff like that. Do you have an emotional friend, right? Do you have someone where, hey, if you have a tough, a tough day, um, you can go and talk to someone and they're going to be there to listen. They're going to give you good advice. Do you have like a, a, a personal health friend? Do you have like, a, I'm usually this in my group. Do you have like a fitness guy where, you know, if you need help with nutrition or your diet or a workout buddy, someone to get you pumped, right? Do you have that? One of my best friends is, is that for me as well, right? Where, you know, he posts every day on Instagram where it's like, hey, four o'clock in the morning, he's in the weight room. And I, I, I see it every day and I'm like, mother, oh, now I got to do something, right? So you, you have that accountability and, and the list goes on, right? You can have a trading friend, talk about accountability partners all the time. You can have, you know, whatever you want, but you shouldn't just have friends to have friends. And I know that sounds mean, um, but your friends need to serve a purpose. If they're not serving a purpose, it, it's dead weight. It, 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 if you are your business, it is, uh, it, it, it is something in your business that isn't being sold. It's just wasting room on your shelf. And that room on your shelf could be used for something else that sells a lot better. So check your friends. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean go and cut them off right away. Like don't, you know, don't go on Facebook and start defriending people or texting people and, and, and ghosting them. Um, but just have different layers, have your friend friends, and then, you know, your, your, are we cool? Them type of people. <laughs> Number five, you seek peace and solutions over pleasure. Most people look for the next quick dopamine hit. Um, if you delay gratification and have a longer time horizon, you are far ahead, right? Um, instant gratification is a, a massive problem. It's getting worse and worse and worse with uh, kind of the deterioration of attention spans and the addiction factor of social media, we're, we're seeing that with even the, the job situation, at least here in the US. Um, don't be a slave to instant gratification. Understand that everything isn't gonna come right away. This is a lesson I'm, I'm trying to teach my kid right now. Whenever he wants something, um, you know, we, we work for it. And we do a lot of longer term projects where it's like, hey, um, you want this Lego set. This Lego set costs hundred dollars. Like, well, well, Dad, what can I do to work? I'm happy he's got that point down. He's like, I, all right. If I want to get money, I have to work. So he's like, Dad, what can I do to work? What can I do to work? And I'm like, okay, oh, you can go rake the leaves. All right, will you give me hundred dollars for raking the leaves? No, I'll give you ten. I'll give you fifteen if you do a really good job. And well, fifteen won't buy me the Lego set. Yeah, you're, you're not gonna be able to get it this weekend. Um, you can think of more things to do and we can save up, but we've started doing stuff like making calendars and, and attacking these small goals where it's like, Hey, if I do this, I'll get this. If I do this, I'll get that. If I get a, a good grade on my test, I'll give you $5. And we, we add it up and we wait and we wait and we wait. And then when he, when he gets it, that moment is more special. So we're, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to, I guess, eliminate that instant gratification where it's like, Oh, I can just go to the store and buy it right away. It's like, no, right. You can look at it. You can dream about it, um, but it's going to take you a while to earn money because when you get older, um, if you're working a job, you don't get paid every day. You've got to wait two weeks for that paycheck, right? You have to wait for stuff. That's just the the reality. And if you if you can't do that, you're going to be <laughs> you're going to be in trouble. Um, so 
looking at solutions, understanding solutions may take time and, and not giving up, right? Not saying, oh, I can't get it today. I don't want it. It's not worth it, right? Trust me, bigger picture when you become, if you become an entrepreneur or a business owner, you got to think far ahead because I'll tell you what, most, most businesses in general fail in their first year. Um, but businesses that are successful, usually they still struggle for a, a good amount of time. We celebrate it when we finished our first year at Tier 1 Trading, right? We got through the first year we're like, oh, still in business. Let's go. We might be on to something here. Um, so have have a, a bigger picture goal and be, be patient. Be patient. Six, learn from your mistakes. Most people run away from their challenges. You do you own or you own your mistakes and learn from them. We talked about this a little bit earlier. But yeah, don't make excuses. Don't make excuses. Own them. Um, that, that's the best thing you can do as a man, as a woman. If you mess up on something, just own it. Just be like, look, my bad. I goofed. Learn from it. How can I do better and better yourself for the next time? Um, and finally, number seven, are you happy in your own company? Are you happy with yourself? You know, love and trust yourself. You can achieve anything when your inner voice is louder than the outside voices. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you're going to be successful, understand that you're going to be in the minority. So the majority of the people that you run into, and, and hopefully we talked about friends, hopefully you have positive friends, but many of them may not be on the same page as you either. Um, they're going to doubt what you're doing. They're going to say either you can't do it or they're not going to want you to do it because it looks bad for them not doing it. So there's going to be a lot of negative voices outside your head. And it's very easy to give in to those negative voices and, and, and just stop or, 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 or be discouraged or stuff like that. Um, you've got to trust yourself and trusting yourself starts with having purpose, right? I had an interview with a trader who was doing a, a project for school the other day. And we talked about the differences between uh, me when I was managing money versus the differences of me teaching traders now. And I said, the biggest difference is, you know, I'm really happy at what I do. Like, I, I feel like I'm providing a valuable service. I'm giving value. Um, I wake up every day excited. There's a, a warm thing and in, in not, not, not very emotional, so I don't know how to explain it. There's a warm thing inside of me that it gets warm <laughs> every time I, I, I work and I help a trader out and I hear a success story of people getting funded or quitting jobs or, or going full time. Like it, it makes me feel good. That is something that didn't exist um, when I was managing money for others because it was just like, hey, I'm helping a wealthy dude get more wealthy, like eh, whatever, um, feeding my own plate at the same time, but it, there wasn't really any value in it. So if you value what you do, if you believe in yourself, if you believe in your message, trust me, you're going to ignore everything else. And a good example is us in the trading industry is that, you know, it's changed a little bit now, but we've been preaching the same message for about about 10 years now. And when we first started preaching this message about what the reality of trading looks like, um, there were so many naysayers out there because at the time it was all get rich quick, um, magic system, this, this, that. Like all the scammers hated us because they're like, hey, man, like stop, stop telling people this. They're not going to buy our scammy stuff. Um, but we held true. Um, we stuck to our morals. We stuck to our values, but we believed in, in, in our message. Um, and now you're seeing so many others, even scammers, unfortunately, adopt that message as well. Um, but the only reason we were able to stick with it is because we truly believed in it. We were comfortable with ourselves and we knew we were doing things for the right reason. And if you can do that, there's absolutely nobody that can stop you. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. As always, make sure to give me a follow. Make sure to give me a like if you're watching this on YouTube. Also, check out the free trading content available at www.tier1trading.com.